don't know if it's warm or cold or hot out here. I don't know what it's trying to be. Uh, Rudy, come on, man. Just <sighs> Guitar off and swing it to the back. Here, get get over here so you can see the movie. I'll turn it down. <laughs> Jack, I got most Johnny Lord on my deep post. All right, so look. All right, so today uh, I'm bringing out um, something that's been on my heart for a while, and um, with a lot of help and definitely a lot of praying and and uh, being guided by God. Um, this this instrument came forth. All right, it's already was an incredible. And look, I can't hardly get it out. It was it was already was. Listen, I don't I was splitting all those verbs up. Well, it was already an incredible bass. Um, the builder did an incredible job on building and coming up with the concept. Um, only thing I did was I just put it and made it my own. It was a lot of help. Uh, from different different ideas and different cats, um, I came up with this concept right here. You saw it on the video at church on Sunday, but I want to bring it back to you again. All right, because a lot of you have never seen it. So this is my 1996 Ken Smith. I want you to look at it. What I did is brushed all the aluminum. Uh, all, I said aluminum. Brushed all the hardware. Um, down to make it look very, very, how can you say it, uh, patina looking, all right? And the, of course, you see the engraves, the engraves, done with a machine, of course. I can't do it with my hand. I could, but it would take me years, <laughs> and I ain't got years, all right? So it has the original Kinsmith preamp in it, has the original Kinsmith pickups in it. Let's go to the neck. Yep, you see something different. I only seen one, one maple neck on a, on a Ken Smith. I can't remember. It had to been in the early 90s or something. Came by and I, I had a chance to see it. But I I, I put a, a maple neck. This is a flame maple neck fretboard. All right. And so it's the real Smith. See the S on the top? Yeah, there you go. And then on the back. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And the serial numbers match it. So you, you can always... Tell the Smith about going inside, going inside the back of that and find out what it is. All right, so um, it is still going through its changes. I took it out for a run yesterday and it did very well, but it's a new neck. And so it has to, it has to sit for a couple of days so she can get adjusted. The neck can get adjusted back to the body because it's a new fretboard um, upon a new base. Well, old base, but you get what I'm saying. So there is another base I did just like this. This engraving thing. This engraving thing is just absolutely amazing. These look more like it's it's supposed to be Egyptian if you look at it. So what I did was um, I took the base all the way back because when the base came in, it had thumb prints. All right, a lot of people play with, play with their thumbs. And they, and they wear out this part right here of the base. Some people wear out this part. Some people wear out that part. Well, I had to take the base down to get rid of that big thumb dip right here. And uh, so that's gone. And so I came up with, I always love engraving. Engraving is like, this is Egyptian engraving. And I always love this because it carries a, a sentimental, thing, sentimental thing in my heart. <laughs> so I put it on front and back and then clear coated it and then put uh, gold flakes in it to give it a pop. And then once I got it back in the shop again, um, I buffed it until it couldn't be buffed anymore because when you engrave stuff like this, it'll tear your clothes all the pieces. I'm going to tell you that right. If you don't sand it back down, it will snatch your clothes and not wear really nice clothes and I don't want my clothes snatched. <laughs> I said snatched. <laughs> oh, he mad. He mad because I won't turn the video back on. I'm gonna turn it on man. Hold on. 
right, so, so we're going to go through this. And uh, I got SIT strings on it, in case you guys wanted to know. Um, I got another set of knobs for it that looks just like the bridge. All right, they look just like the bridge. I took all the coat off the bridge, so the knobs look just like that. But they haven't came in yet, so I'm waiting. All right, so we're gonna turn. We're gonna go to our. Um, we're gonna go to our SWRLA12 with no hone in it. <laughs> He's like, why you keep saying ain't no hone in it? Cause there ain't no hone in it. Where the hone at? Right here. There's the home. All right, customer coming down and go like, yo, man, why don't you put the home in it? Why? It's working for me right now like it is. All right, so first we're going to turn everything off. All right, so on my SWR, we're going to go in passive. I don't really have to turn stuff off because I just go in passive mode. It has a push-pull. The Ken Smith always had the push-pull on the volume, all right? So I got it in passive mode right now, so it might sound a little low. But it sounds like a Smith. So I'm gonna put the camera down a little bit so you can see more of the bass. Okay, here we go. There we are. There we are. She's low, but I I, I know for sure that she's gonna have to sit for a couple of days. So she can get adjusted and then I can bring it down a lot lower. But she sounds amazing. That's the real pickup on right now. Mm -hmm. I love this bass. The weight, I took a lot of weight off it by just sanding it down. So Majority of the weight is gone, so it's just light like a feather, but she sounds amazing. Front pickup. Sorry, front pickup. pick up again. Okay, bull pick up. This is in passive mode now. Okay, now, oh, that knob is loose. See? See? That, that gotta get stuff right. So, so now we're gonna go into active mode. By going to active mode, just push it down. So we're gonna go, we're gonna go mids first, all right? And what we don't know about a Smith is that a lot of people call it one trick trick pony, but it's just it's just a beautiful bass. And you know what? Oh, listen. Once you learn your mids, you can pull back on your bass. Like right now, I can hear the bass really well. I don't want it that ballsy. So I want to pull back on it. So I'm going to take it back a little bit. That's what I want. I want to stay clean across the top. take the knob came off see right in front of you so I'm gonna take the take the trouble and put the trouble at D10 you hit you hit <laughs> so what yeah 
I guess you asked me, so what you got your amp on? A lot of the customers come here and they see that I keep my amp just below 9 o'clock. That's it. Just below 9 o'clock. So we're going to take the trouble and take the trouble to about, let's take it about three quarters. <laughs> the mids is about three quarters. the bass about just before just before d10 so i'm gonna take it at d10 right now all right <laughs> softer woods so with this maple neck i can hear that the notes are a little bit more over the top and what i mean by over the top it means it's almost at the point where it almost <laughs> want to distort and that's not a bad thing it's just the pickups i don't think smith pickups are designed for I would say maple on maple, but this is just my opinion. All right. So now this bass is 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 experiencing something brand new. It experiencing maple on maple, everything maple. So what my ear hears is the true Smith. What my other mind ear hears is a little bit over the top, almost not. A, I would say distortion would be it, but it's a it's almost an overkill of greatness. Boy, you better preach that. Preach that. What? What? Oh. <laughs> Y'all thought I had somebody else in here. Boy, you better preach that. <laughs> so here we go. I know that the notes are really much more clean. That's, that's the best way to put it. The notes are much more cleaner. <laughs> And the attack is a lot more uh, sharper. Now let's turn some the bases at D10, but let's let's take it a little bit past D10. That's that Smith Balls right there, baby.
See how more aggressive that berry is that with this maple neck? And the knuckling is much more. something an, an idea or a masterpiece that's what he makes it a masterpiece i'm gonna tell y'all right now i am overwhelmed with this i am i'm 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 just i'm just out here with this this is absolutely this is amazing to me i'm sorry this, this is amazing to me mm. Mm. It's amazing to me. So, so once again, guys, please keep praying for the Hobo Depot. Please, please keep um, praying for the Queen and I. We pray for y'all every morning. Sorry, we pray for y'all every morning, every, every every morning, every night. A lot of times I don't say night; I just say early morning because we we all need early morning prayer to get our day started, and that's what I I do for you guys, you guys every morning. Once again, guys, please share, like, and please subscribe. You know, sorry about the knob. You know, they, they work loose. I had it tight, but obviously I didn't tighten it enough. Once again, here's my Kid Smith 1996, vintage 1996, with all custom work. It is a Kid Smith 1996. Once again, guys, with all my heart, share the caca! Okay, Hootie, I can turn your TV back on now, man, because I know you've been sitting there looking all crazy at me. He's been calling forever. <laughs>